This is CBN News Watch. Thanks for joining us for CBN News Watch. I'm Mark Martin. The U.S. negotiated ceasefire along the Syria Turkey border comes to an end tonight, and it appears that Kurdish forces have pulled out of northeast Syria just hours before the deadline. Vice President Mike Pence worked out the deal with the Turkish president last week, asking Turkey to pause its invasion of Syria while Kurdish fighters moved out. Heather Sells is here now with more. Heather. Mark, a senior Trump administration official says that Syrian Kurdish-led forces are now out of the area in northern Syria that Turkey had wanted cleared. Apparently, a Kurdish commander notified the White House of their withdrawal in a letter. The Kurds, a longtime U.S. ally, have accused the U.S. of betrayal, and Russia is now gaining increasing influence in the region. So there's a lot of concern as the region's geopolitics are changing by the day. Today, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo praised President Trump for his role in pushing back against Turkey's invasion into northeast Syria. We think now we're in a better place. The truth was that President Trump was prepared to cause uh, and raise costs for uh, Turkey in the event that they continued their incursion. Uh, so the President used America's economic might, our economic power, to avoid a kinetic conflict with a NATO ally. And as President Trump treated that very nay, there needed to be some tough love in order to get it done. As the U.S. has pulled out troops from northeast Syria, desperate Kurds have tried to protest, holding signs that said, thanks for the U.S. people, but Trump betrayed us. The president says he disagrees. We fought with them for three and a half to four years. We never agreed to protect the Kurds for the rest of their lives. What's clear now, growing Russian influence in the region. Russian helicopters with armed troops landed today on a Syrian airbase in the northeastern Raqqa province. And Russia's President Vladimir Putin met today with the Turkish president to discuss Syria. With U.S. troops withdrawing, the Kurds are now reaching out to the Syrian government and its main ally, Russia. Meanwhile, Syria's President Bashar al-Assad visited troops in the province of Idlib today Turkish-backed fighters and jihadi groups control the majority of the province. Assad called the Turkish president a thief, saying he's stolen factories, wheat and oil, and now he's stealing land. Assad promised to take back the lost territory. And there's still a number of questions about U.S. troops. President Trump says some American troops will stay in Syria to protect oil. Other American troops have been expected to go to Iraq, but Iraq is saying they do not have permission. And this just in, Turkey and Russia now are announcing a new deal. They say that in the next week, Syrian Kurdish fighters will move 18 miles away from a border area in northeast Syria. Turkey and Russia will then conduct joint patrols in the area. All right, thank you, Heather. In the middle of all this, there's a real humanitarian crisis going on with displaced people. Do you have any updates on that? Yes, the UN today is saying it's 176,000 people who have been displaced in just the last two weeks. And today, the White House said that it will give $4 million to support a group of Syrian rescue workers known as the White Helmets. That group is known to have rescued more than 115,000 people during the eight-year conflict in Syria. Okay, Heather, thank you for that report. You're welcome. In Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has told President Reuven Rivlin he could not form a new government, potentially throwing the ball back into the court of opposition leader Benny Gantz to see what he can do. CBN News Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell brings us that story from Jerusalem. Netanyahu returned the mandate to form a government shortly after sundown at the end of the Jewish High Holy Days. Since I received the mandate, I've worked tirelessly both in public and behind the scenes to establish a broad national unity government. That's what the people want. It's also what Israel needs in response to the security challenges that increase by day and by the hour. Netanyahu released a video explaining that he had repeatedly approached blue and white leader Benny Gantz, his partner Yair Lapid, and Israeli Betenu leader Avigdor Lieberman. Gantz, Lapid, and Lieberman only talk about unity. In practice, they do the complete opposite. They encourage division and boycott, they reject the religious. Israelis went to the poll for the second time in six months in September after Netanyahu failed to pull together a government of a majority of Knesset members. 
According to the law, President Rivlin has three days to decide if he'll give the mandate to Gantz, who would then have 28 days to try to form a unity government. It's the first time since Netanyahu was elected in 2009 that another leader could be asked to form a government, though Gantz's chances of succeeding are slimmer. Blue and White released a statement saying, Blue and White is determined to create the liberal unity government led by Gantz that the people elected a month ago. Gantz has less backers than Netanyahu, but could also try to build a minority government that would be supported from the outside by the Arab parties who deny Israel's right to exist. Netanyahu warned against this. If Gantz takes up the challenge to form a new government and fails after 28 days, there's another option. If any Knesset member can bring together a majority of Knesset members, they could become the next prime minister. If that fails, Israelis will head to new elections probably next March. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. In China, government authorities tore down a megachurch building in the Funan Anhui region and started the demolition job while the congregation was worshiping. The church's pastors were also arrested and detained. The incident happened over the weekend, according to the international nonprofit Christian human rights organization China Aid. China Aid's president called it another clear example showing the escalation of religious persecution today by the Chinese communist regime. You can read more about this story on CBNNews.com. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson is at the House of Commons today in an effort to push his Brexit deal through. The bill faces two votes today, with lawmakers first being asked to approve it in principle, followed by a vote on the government's schedule for debate and possible amendments. Johnson said that it was time to take the decision that this country expects and leave the European Union on October 31st. If Parliament refuses to allow Brexit to happen and instead uh, gets its way and decides to delay everything until January or, or possibly longer, uh, in those circumstances can the government continue with this. And uh, with great regret, I must go directly to the point that the Honourable Gentleman uh, raises. With great regret, I, will, I must say that the, bu the bill will have to be pulled and we will have to go forward, uh, much as the right Honourable Gentleman may not like it, we will have to go forward to a general election. And here at home, House Democrats are planning to go public with their impeachment hearings. So far, most of the investigation has been done in private, with committee members interviewing witnesses behind closed doors. The New York Times reports now they're looking to hold a series of public hearings to convince the American people and possibly more Republicans that the president committed impeachable offenses. That will likely extend the impeachment inquiry into December longer than they originally planned. Meanwhile, the president is calling on Republicans to be stronger in his defense. They have to get tougher and fight because the Democrats are trying to hurt the Republican Party for the election. They're lousy politicians. But two things they have, they're vicious and they stick together. They don't have Mitt Romney in their midst. GOP Senator Mitt Romney has said he's open to impeachment if there's evidence the president held up military aid to fulfill a political purpose. We'll have more on these stories and others on this, this evening on our Faith Nation program, and you can watch it right here on the CBN News Channel. Coming up, what happens to unborn babies after they are aborted? And the shocking truth behind that tragedy. And before we go to break, here's a look at what's trending on CBNNews.com. If you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm gonna teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. It's about the competition. I kind of put that pressure on myself, and I think people had expectations. It's about overcoming. We use this phrase all the time, keep chopping, keep practicing hard. 
It's about going the distance. You know, I think as a father, it's my job, you know, to lead. Just be the best husband and father I can be. Watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown Saturday night at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. Orphan's Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? Pro-life advocates decry the hundreds of thousands of abortions performed in America every year. But the tragedy doesn't stop there. Intact parts of the child's body are in high demand among scientists. And as Jennifer Wishon explains in this alarming report, you may need to sit down when you hear who's paying for their experiments. Organs, bones, and other body parts of aborted babies are being sold and transplanted into lab animals. No, this is not a passage out of Frankenstein. These are real experiments happening now that taxpayers are funding. It's abhorrent on so many levels. Anthony Bellotti is president and founder of White Coat Waste Project, a group exposing experiments like this. Here are the reproductive tracts from aborted 13-week-old twin girls were stripped out and implanted into mice. Last year, the National Institutes of Health funded 200 similar studies across 50 institutions, mostly universities, in 33 states. This year, the NIH estimates it will spend 120 million tax dollars on research using aborted baby parts. But this is a crisis now. This problem is growing in spite of Republicans, Democrats, pro-lifers, animal advocates. Nobody wants this. Teresa Bukovinak runs Pro-Life San Francisco. The bulk of the research happens in her backyard at the University of California, San Francisco. One of the most um, infamous projects that was recently canceled by the Trump administration was um, a project that involved humanizing mice. And that project required two pristine, healthy fetuses between the ages of 18 and 24 weeks per month. Nearly 70 members of Congress from both parties are working to expose these gruesome experiments. They've issued a letter demanding information from Secretary of Health and Human Services, Alex Azar. You're asking him to indicate how many different babies were used in each project and the gestational ages of each. It, can you believe that you're even having to write a letter like this? It is deeply saddening to me that our own government would be a part of creating this marketplace for the buying and selling of baby parts. In June, the Trump administration took steps to end human fetal research, but loopholes allow most of it to continue. In response, more than 90 research institutions wrote Secretary Azar to say fetal tissue remains an essential resource, crediting it for vaccines and potential treatments for ALS, spinal cord injuries, and Parkinson's disease. Opponents agree this is important research, but argue there are alternatives to human fetal tissue. Using it, they say, encourages late-term abortions, which produce more developed babies that are more lucrative when sold for research. That means abortion doctors receive incentives to use techniques that preserve babies and all their parts for science experiments. So 
the only two ways they can do these abortions is through a live dismemberment or a medical induction, which according to the Society of Family Planning, is very likely to produce born alive infants. To our core, to our founding, the recognition of the importance of life is who we are, and we can never get away from that. Legislation has been introduced here on Capitol Hill that would prohibit the Secretary of Health and Human Services from authorizing any research that uses aborted baby parts. Research on stillbirth or miscarriage tissue would still be allowed. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News, Capitol Hill. Still ahead, we're going to show you how dogs can be more than just pets. They're actually now an important part of the medical community. We're going to bring you a look at Dr. Dogs right after this. Daddy? Yeah, buddy? How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my bow stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die, will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board certified neurologist and number one New York Times bestselling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog, and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can, and I'm going to show you how, along with some of the world's most well respected brain experts. In this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD only from the Christian Broadcasting Network, featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy. Improve your memory. Discover the gut-brain connection in Protect Your Brain. Get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD, Protect Your Brain, and get it today. It has the power to influence weight loss, boost your immune system, and improve brain function. We've seen an explosion of data on the role of the gut microbiome in health. The free Build a Better Gut booklet reveals the latest information about the gut microbiome. You'll discover how your gut affects the rest of your health. The gut microbiome has been linked to depression and cancer and heart disease. Learn how to build a stronger, healthier gut. The microbiome, if it's in good composition, are really protecting us all the time from more invasive things. Get the Build a Better Gut booklet, free from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut. You need to make sure that your microbes are working with you, not against you. And if you order online, you'll get immediate access to the Build a Better Gut series, a digital copy of the booklet, and related bonus material. Build a better gut today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut for your free copy. Welcome back. If you have a dog, then you already know they're more than just companions. It turns out dogs are now an important part of the medical community. Lori Johnson spoke to a woman whose dog helps her live with crippling narcolepsy. And that's just the tip of the iceberg of what so-called doctor dogs can do. Here's CBN Health reporter Lori Johnson with a look at these important animals in a segment from tonight's Healthy Living program on the CBN News Channel. We're back with Danielle Brooks, who lives with narcolepsy, and her sweet dog, Rolo, and Maria Goodavage, author of the new book, Dr. Dogs, How Our Best Friends Are Becoming Our Best 
medicine. And Maria, you feature so many people with different medical conditions in your book who are helped by these dogs, such as Clay Ronk and his diabetic alert dog, Whitley. Clay has type 1 diabetes, right? Yes, and they learned about it during a terrible emergency when he was seven years old. He had to be rushed, airlifted to San Francisco, uh, San Francisco Hospital, where they saved his life. And he tried for years to get one of these dogs who can alert to high or low blood sugars. And when he was 14, he was paired with Whitley, who is truly a lifesaver. She is so good about staring at him, and she has a something called a brinzel, um, which she can pick up. It's hanging off of her, like a tube hanging off of her collar. And when she smells a low blood sugar, she'll sit and stare and just make sure he knows and he'll test. And she's inevitably 15 or 20 minutes before his devices, before his monitors. Yeah, wow. it's, it's incredible. And she actually can awake from a deep sleep to tell him that he's going into, into a, a low. So it's, yeah, she's a lifesaver. And she also goes to college with him. Oh, wonderful, yeah, yeah. wonderful. Well, you also talk in your book about doctor dogs who help people who are prone to having seizures. Yes, yeah, that's another one of the wonderful things they do. Um, they give people back their lives yeah. because people do not know when they're going to have a seizure. Um, and so the dogs are now being trained to sniff before they can tell the scent of someone before they have a seizure. There are probably other signals that they're using, mm -hmm. but now it's uh, they're training them on scent for the most part, mm -hmm. and they can also tell them, don't, you know, here, you're going, to, you're going to have a seizure, and so they won't shower, or they'll sit down if they're outside, they'll take their medication, mm -hmm. and then, uh, like Danielle's dog, they're with them while they're seizing, they're trained what mm -hmm. to do, some call 911 or the, the nearest relative, and they're just best friends in these situations. We have a picture of Leslie Fong yeah. and her seizure alert dog named Bud, yes. and these yeah, two is, are good buddies. This is just after one of her um, tonic-clonic seizures, those are mm -hmm. grand mal seizures, and he's there, he cuddles up with her, he, he actually goes underneath her, he sidles up to her so she doesn't get damaged when she's going through one of these seizures and, she, and then he's there with her for the stage after the seizures. He's, such, he's, he's her best friend. I just saw her the other day and they're doing great. Oh, that's what's, wonderful. What's really cool about the uh, seizure alert dogs is that's like an innate ability. So once they figure out that dog can alert, then they go in and can keep on working and training that Yeah, skill. yeah. Some, some dogs can get it and some dogs don't. And, yeah. and a lot of the times the dogs self-train and mm -hmm. the people realize, wait, my dog is getting anxious and then 10 minutes later I have a seizure. Oh, so yeah. those people can, can learn to read their own dog and it's really a lifestyle. Saving Fascinating. And we know that some dogs can even detect cancer, which yes. is mind boggling. A lot of people can't believe that, that dogs are able to do that. But we, you talk about a Japanese community uh, that has a very high rate of stomach cancer and they're using doctor dogs there. Yeah, and that's actually one of the first, that's the first screening study. Most of the work in cancer is being done in uh, research centers. Now, get it out of the way. These are not le beagles locked away in cages. Right. These are happy dogs. They're usually pets who come in for the mm -hmm. day and they're really trained mm -hmm. and they can detect cancer around a cancer wheel. And in Japan, um, they have a very high stomach rate of cancer in this gorgeous community. And you would never think, oh, such a high stomach rate. But they're not looking at why the stomach rate is so high, but mm -hmm. um, at how they can do detection rapidly, non-invasively. Mm -hmm. And this uh, Dr. Miyashita is a doctor in Tokyo who, who specializes in stomach cancer. And he was able to work with the community and using urine samples, do a detection on about a thousand people in the community. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the first one in a, a real town. Everything else has been laboratory. And it's hard because you can't reward the dog if you don't know if it's cancer or not. So there was a, there were some stumblings uh, there, but they did a really good job, and they're continuing with this. So you talk about psychiatric service dogs, mental health, and uh, we have a picture here of Angus, who's helping Kit Heiser. What's that situation yeah, like? She's in a mall. I she was has with anxiety, them. I took right? this picture. Yes, yes, she has very significant anxiety, and um, they were in a mall, and she started getting kind of anxious and nervous, and she just asked him exit. And he knew where the exit was, and he was able to get her to the exit. This can happen in concerts, and, and she, he also leans into her and, and does all the things that dogs can do to lessen uh, the anxiety that people have, but in a very direct way that's really helpful to her. They have a lot of skills around these, and this is very common with uh, dogs trained for PTSD as well. Mm -hmm.
fascinating interview. To watch the entire show, tune into Healthy Living. It's tonight at 930 Eastern Time, only on the CBN News Channel. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after the break. Region's first ROTC graduate. <laughs> Meet the pastors who are preaching the gospel in a fresh, fearless way. I'm Roberto Torres Cedillo. Join me each week for Next Gen Voices. And watch God transform a generation. How would you like to get a redo on your health, on your body, on your arteries, so you could have the energy you had 20 years ago? The great news is you can. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen, chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. I've written four New York Times bestsellers, but even better than having to read all that, you can listen to this DVD and watch it. Protect your heart? Yes, you can. Here's how. Go to CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000 for your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Let the medical experts show you their new discoveries on how to avoid heart disease and even reverse it. Easy steps to uncover the hidden dangers in your medicine cabinet, reduce stress, and get a complete do-over for your health. Call 1-800-700-7000. That's 1-800-700-7000. Or go to CBN.com to claim your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Prophecy thousands of years old. We were called to be a light to the world. Being fulfilled today. <laughs> Discover how. Get to life. Call 1-800-700-7000. We consider it our duty to reach out and help others around the world. For a gift of $10 or more, you can own the acclaimed CBN documentary to life. Just call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com. To treat a human, no matter what he is, which religious he have, which color he is, this is what I'm doing. See how the people of Israel are fulfilling prophecy. History is being written, and I want to be a part of it. By sharing their knowledge. In Africa, in Asia, in South America, in East Europe. And their love. This is how we work. This is us. Get to life. Call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com. NFL player Demario Davis of the New Orleans Saints is giving all the glory to God for the huge upward movement from his Man of God headbands. Davis was originally fined $7,000 by the NFL for wearing a headband that said Man of God under his helmet during a game on September 22nd. After some public backlash, however, the NFL eventually backed down, and Davis then used the publicity from his fine to sell Man of God headbands to raise money to expand the emergency room at a hospital in Jackson, Mississippi. The headbands have raised over $120,000. What a wonderful story. And that's going to do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. Hope you'll join us next time. Have a great day.